Hey y'all, it's Sarah. Um, some of you guys on the Peppermint Cactus Facebook group had asked me if I would show how I did my half fan. Um, so I thought I would pop on and do a quick version of it. Um, I'm going to change it just a little bit just because I don't have some of the same pieces. Like um, this center portion is actual real washers that my husband had. And that was the only one of those that I had. So I'm going to switch a few things up for showing you guys but it's going to be really similar and pretty much able to do with Dollar Tree items so let's jump in and get started um I'm going to show you a few things that I'm going to be using of course the first thing you guys know me it's going to be um foam core this is ready board brand and your strips can be cut pretty much any size you want um, there are a couple things to keep in mind when you are cutting them is being able to space them out down here. Um, so keep that in mind when you're cutting them. Mine are cut at four, um, four inches wide by 15 inches long. And I'm going to be honest with you. Uh, I did this because the sheets are 30 inches long. However, mine are actually... My sheets did not run at a full 30 inches in length, so they're more like four by 14 and a quarter, or 14 and three quarters. So you'll need seven of the cuts in order to make our fan blades. We're gonna be using one of these Crafter Square brush and pencil organizers, just one portion of it, and you'll still have pieces left to make other crafts with. Um, I'm going to be using some googly eyes uh, for my bolts and things this time, but I am going to show you a couple options. You're going to need seven of the Crafter Square uh, 12 inch wooden dowels. These are the thicker ones. They're like a quarter of an inch thick. And a couple of optional things that I want to show you so that you kind of can um, make the hardware part of this whichever way you want um, that's going to be options like um, just regular flat thumbtacks you can see on mine on the base portion here that's what I used um, I use scrapbooking brads here uh, because I had them although this time I'm going to be using my googly eyes for that you could use real washers. These are 97 cents at Walmart, I think. But I'm gonna show you a different option on your washers. This is a little traveling game that Dollar Tree has. Um, it's supposed to be like uh, Connect Four. It's called Four in a Row. And it's got these little chips in it that you can also use like washers. So the last thing, um, and mine is currently drying, is going to be um i used or i will be using a 16 inch wire wreath ring that i'm going to cut in half and stretch out like this mine is currently drying with spray paint at the moment um but i've cut it in half and then we've stretched it out and it's the last thing that um, i really am going to apply on this because you kind of have to maneuver it in order to keep this um kind of half moon shape so that it sits up nicely where you want it to sit up as this half moon shape. Um, mine sits, you could always just hang it the way that it is, um, but mine actually sits on a shelf just above my TV like this. So let's jump into um, the cutting of your foam core really quick. I'm just gonna cut one and show you how I did this. You can see that I already have my other blades cut. Um, so all you really have to do, and you can see where it is tapered down. I'm gonna bring out my cutting blade and just a straight edge, something to mark with, and something to cut on. And I know a lot of you guys are still struggling with cutting you see me use my self-healing mats just because it's what I have handy here. But when I'm working by myself and it's not being recorded, I use cardboard under my cuts. And it helps my blade bite in better. 
and it's less work and pressure that I need to get my cuts. I have much better luck with that. If you're still struggling, maybe try that method. So all I'm going to do is come down at one end of this four inch width and mark an inch over. And the further over you go, the more tapered it's going to be. Um, I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. So it comes in an inch on each side. And all we're going to do to taper that in is go to this very corner and come down to my first notch on this side. And I am struggling. I do not have my little, um, I have my finger guards drying. So I do like using those to hold my blade. And there you go. You're just going to cut that little sliver off. Same thing from the other side. Here's my notch here. And I'm just doing this because I'm right hand dominant. I'm going to hit that notch. Going to come to the very point on this end. And you notice that I always try to catch my blade above where I'm wanting to cut. That lets you put pressure down first before it ever bites into this um, foam core. And it helps give you a much cleaner cut. And there you go. There is one of your blades. Like I said, you can cut this to any size you want. Make this larger, um, a larger of a scale. I actually made this to fit almost... Um, the exact width of the shelf that I have it on so you can adjust it really to fit your needs and in the manner that we're going to put this together um, it does have stability so that you can really go in and um, make it stronger or make it larger and still keep um, the stability of it together and that's because I'm using this piece right here I'm going to go ahead and pull that out so I can show you guys um, how we're going to be using that. And so you could very easily use this piece if you wanted to. You could still cut it. Um, similar, you'd have to work with it a little bit. You've got some spots that would hide issues where you've met your little blades. And you'd have to find a way to kind of hide these. But if you put it on a backer, you would probably be good. So you have this one to make stuff with. We're going to be using the flat one so that I can glue things to the top of it. And I'm going to put these away so that I can make something else out of them later. Um, one of the first things I want to show you that I did with this piece is... I marked mine on the back so that I kept it consistent every time and I've still got some glue strings here but I marked what was going to be straight up and down for me and if you look at this all of these kind of line up in more of a brick pattern except for you'll notice there's one straight line here one here one here and one here so I marked mine to help keep it um make sure that I was lining things up the right way I wanted to make sure that I got my little arms lined up correctly. And I'm going to show you how we're going to do this. It's pretty cut and dry, literally. So this plastic right here is pretty thin. I'm going to snap into it. And I'm on my big fan, I went all the way down. On this one, I'm only going to do this first little hole. And we're just going to go just to the side of our kind of north straight line point there. And I'm using my smaller ones here. These are my Dollar Tree ones. I'm going to have to switch and grab my big ones. Okay, I've got my Mac Tool versions. I know these will hold up to it. My first one, I actually did this with scissors, so um, that one just was not strong enough. I am not going to go the full expanse of that. I did on these and I ended up having to fill that up more. I'm going to try to just go about the width of one of my dowels. If you can see that. And when you go to push that down, it snaps right off of there. So 
the thing about getting this to line up, if you notice, I have these spaced kind of interesting. And I had to do this in order to get this half shape to hold up to itself. So the way that I did this was that a dowel is going to go in this section here. And I'm going to tell you, my first one, I spray painted every piece individually and then assembled it. You're going to watch. This time, I'm going to assemble pretty much the entire thing and then do my spray paint afterwards. I think that would honestly end up being um, a lot easier. So I'm going to do it that route this time. So what I've done is here is my first one. It's in its place. Now we're going to be able to skip one. And we're going to put the next one here in this square. So let me grab a marker and see if I can mark that for you guys. So one is in the center. Skip one of these little blocks. And now we're going to mark this one as being our one to cut. Now you're going to skip two and you're going to put another one here. Same thing on this side. Now we are going to skip one, two, three. And this third one, this one down here, these have to lay um, a little differently this way so that they do stay in that half form. So let me make sure I've got everything correct. Skip two, one, two, three. Here is where my other section is going to cut. And let me go ahead and start popping these out. And I'm really, I'm just going to do them just wide enough that my dowels um, slide in there. And if you notice, I'm trying where this line comes straight across. I am trying to cut, instead of cutting this whole section out, I'm cutting closest to that. And I'm just going to keep cutting these out. And you guys will see how all the cuts look um, in just a moment. Okay, so I've notched all my little spots out to secure my dowel arms for this. Um, and you can kind of see this is where my up and down is going to be. So I'm going to start my placement. Um, this glue right here, we are going to fill these little, these little open um, cavities up with glue. And it's really going to hold these puppies in place. So be prepared. This uses quite a bit of hot glue and if you notice it gives a little extra space as we go down now when it fans out that is going to look completely normal it's going to work fine and I did not make my little notch wide enough on these bottom ones so let me snap that. And you see how easy those just snap apart. And that's coming from someone who I have RA, so my hands are not always at optimum strength. So I really almost want to adjust this one, and I am not sure why it's lining up slightly different um, than my first one. But you know what? I am going to just eyeball that and adjust it. And this little section is slightly harder to cut. That may be why I did it that way the first time. I might have not been able to get it cut the first time. It's got like a little reinforcement right there. On that tab if you can see it which made it a little harder okay no there we go I'm happier with that alignment so let me get all these guys in place I feel
feel like they're in their alignment. We're just going to start filling these little holes up. Um, it's liable to take you a couple of glue sticks. I'm just using the Dollar Tree glue sticks. And I kind of do this a little bit at a time. Rather than filling the whole thing up at once, because it does take so long to harden, I'm going to go ahead and tack it in place with a good little chunk of glue. And then before I finish this up, I'm going to continue to finish um, and fill those little squares up. That way I don't have to worry about anything moving and moving around until it completely cools off and hardens. This was part of the other reason why I said I felt like I really wanted to spray paint it all afterwards. Your hot glue, when you're working on something like this, if you, um, if you kind of maneuver it right, it gives you the illusion of welds and things when you're working with something that's going to look like metal. So I will likely dribble a little right outside of these dowels to almost make it look like there are welds involved. And I'm sorry, I did not realize that you guys could not see all of that. Um, let me get these back stationary here. We are going to let these guys dry, and I'll be back. Okay, so now I have my fan blades. My glue has hardened really nicely. This thing is really um, glued together now. I'm going to go ahead and start trying to align my blades um, and hope that I've gotten them spaced pretty nicely. And I'm going to show you a kind of a cheat. And if you've seen me do the big, big fan, um, you saw me do this with uh, kind of the, the tumbling tower pieces. I'm just going to do it with my sanding block here. And I'm going to start with my center one and try to work everything else um, kind of down nicely from it. So the cool thing about this is that it is about the width. Um, so I will be able to kind of make sure I'm getting it centered and lined up all the same way. And I'm going to turn this to my side so I can see what I'm doing. And hopefully there you can kind of see how that helps get some alignment for us and i'm just going to start gluing things down this this process honestly you're going to go through a lot of hot glue i'm not even going to pretend with you i'm doing this now though because when we get our googly eyes on here we're not going to want to flip this upside down as much because we can cave those in having it flipped upside down so i'm going to come in here and I am going to glue this pretty heavily. You can be as neat or as messy. This is the back side, so you're okay. I'm going fairly heavy so that you guys can see the glue. And then we'll be adding more to the very end of this because you're going to see that our wire... Um, our frame is going to pretty much hit right about the tips of every single one of these. So while that one's drying, I'm just going to continue to move on using the same spacing here. And I'm just checking each of my fan blades, my windmill blades, whatever you want to call those kind of blades. And making sure that I've got my best front forward there. On the wood, you can really get away with the dented pieces um, and the damaged pieces. We can really work those into that look. It's a little harder with the metal. So just kind of be aware of that. It only takes one sheet. So if you can get one decent sheet, um, you'll be okay. So each one of these is going to get attached in the same manner all the way to this end one. We're going to attach every single one of them the same way. 
Okay, so now I'm down to these bottom two. Now these are the only ones that we're going to do slightly just a hair different. And I kind of wanted to show you what and why. Um, we're going to wait until right about the same time that we adhere the wire back here to put these last two kind of in their place and the reason I want to do that is because these two more than likely will need a hair of adjustment to get a good alignment so that they do stay in that half um, moon kind of shape now if you want to offset that now and go ahead and just do the work I'm going to show you a way that you can cheat and do that if you have a straight edge um, whether it be your ruler, another strip, whatever. I'm just going to grab a strip here where you guys can see. You can kind of bring this down. And you're going to be able to adjust this. I will likely have to cut the dowels on these because I went ahead and glued it this way because I decided I wanted to put the whole thing together before painting it. Um, but... Try to keep your alignment on both sides fairly even using something long um, that will allow you to kind of balance that out so that you don't have it tilting one way or the other if you choose to prop it up. Um, and I'll show you that as soon as we get to putting the ring on it and like I said that was one of the pieces that I really wanted to do to the last because it is one that really kind of has to have room for adjustment okay so now we can do a little of the fun part I'm gonna bring in all of my little decorative goodies and like I said before as a paper piecer this is the part that gets fun for me is using all the little trinkets and things to um, embellish it and really make it look like a scene. So I'm just going to pull these little uh, game disc out of here and I guess it really doesn't matter which colors I use. Uh, and I wanted to show you, I have the Dollar Tree googly eyes which has 125 pieces they come in three different sizes um the really really large one and then the medium and the small and they are very very close in size the medium and the small i already happen to have some little bitty ones in my stash these i believe came from a pack from dollar general um that was like a dollar for a pack also so these are much smaller than these i may end up using these we'll see I know one of the first things I'm going to do is I want one of the large ones for my center. And along with my center, and this is absolutely not necessary, but I knew I happened to have this piece. When you buy the, the magnets from Dollar Tree, they come on this little metal disc. And I'm going to put my little metal disc right in the center of my piece. Let me keep up with my magnets here, but... Um, the packaging, I mean, always look at your packaging, too. If you're an old school scrapbooker like me, I don't have to tell you guys that. Okay, I'm going to slide some of these things out of my way. And let's start playing with the fun things. So, y'all don't laugh, I can't pick these up once I set them down. I'm going to end up doing this right here. You can use your hot glue gun on this. It's going to stick pretty decent. My, I haven't had any problems with my other one. Although I do use a whole lot of hot glue. So that may be the factor there of why it sticks pretty good. And I'm just going to try to... That gets a little warm, by the way. Um, there in the metal center and this is going to look crazy guys and you notice that i did not lay out my googly eyes this time so i do not risk dumping the whole tray of them i 
I do want to tell you. So I have glued something to this and didn't have the alignment good and went to readjust it. And I used my heat gun to try to lift the glue up and pop it off. I melted one of these, by the way. So just know that that's a possibility. And I'm going to come in. I'm going to use, these are the small size for Dollar Tree. These are their smallest ones where I used thumbtacks on my first one. And the really cool part about using the thumbtacks is I managed to line it up right there where my wooden dowel was and popped it through and it went through my foam core straight into my wooden dowel. So a little bit more security if you want to go ahead and go with, um, actually, let me show you. Let me show you that because I thought it was really kind of cool that it gave that extra security and I can still use these somewhere else. And assuming that you can try to line it up right above it, you'll see I've hit the wood and it just popped right into that wood. Um, so when I say that these things are honestly pretty sturdy, they really are. So I'm popping into the wooden dowel for every one of these. And it really is not that hard to do. That That's a very soft wood. The foam um, kind of keeps it in alignment. So really all you're doing is putting the pressure down. And we're going to do that with every single one of them. And you don't have to do it this way. You can get as creative and crazy with it as you want to. Put as much hardware on there as you want to. To me, this is probably one of the funnest parts is getting to do like these little embellishments. And I'm sorry, I will keep calling them embellishments because that's just what I'm used to calling them. So I think the next thing I'm going to do, I may not use these at all. We shall see. Um, these are the middle size Dollar Tree ones. When I apply them here, they are pretty much, once they are painted out silver, they are going to look like a bolt bolted into there. And let me show you a really cool tip. You can always use these little guys, um, these little plastic guys. And I thought that's what I was going to do until I started laying it out. And um, but I wanted to show you a quick tip. If you use actual washer washers for this, when you go to put glue on it, to glue it down to here, if you put glue on one side, it's going to squish through that center. And as soon as it does, you pop your little googly eye on and you are good to go. So I am undecided if I want to do that. And while I'm making that decision, I'm going to go ahead and kind of adjust this. Okay, so I have some of my pieces adhered in place, um, and I've brought in my 16-inch wire frame, and I've got this one just to show you if you want to add extra pieces, if you want to really just kind of enhance the look of this. So I've already cut the outer ring off. I use this on my bigger one. Um, I'm just going to come in, I've got my wire cutters again, and cut all of these loose from each little section of this, and each one of those is going to pretty much line up with, um, with our fan blades. Uh, we'll be able to hide most of the little nubs if you can't cut that cleanly, and I'm going to go ahead and cut mine. Okay, so you can see I've cut mine loose. Um, I've gotten pretty good where the little nubs were. And if you look around your ring and go all the way around, you'll find that there is a seam that you can snip it and it makes it really easy to cut this apart. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to sit and try to kind of stretch this guy out. 
I still want to keep some of its roundness, but I want to stretch it out fairly evenly so that it it kind of remains in a half circle um, where it keeps most of its nice roundness. I don't want to buckle it out anywhere or get it too kind of misshapen. And I'm going to flip this over, kind of find the center up here. And now you can see what I was saying about um, the alignments on these. Most of them are going to align along your little dowels. Um, right at the very end, this is why I wanted to have adjustment. My... I cut the 16 inch ring off of mine, I realized. This part of it is, um, that inner section of that ring is 15 and a half. And you can see there's where that 15 and a half shows up. So I'm going to have to adjust mine and tweak it um, a little closer than I would have had that been the full 16 inch outer ring. Um, but I forgot about that. that. That outer portion of that ring was the 16 inch part. The next part goes to 15 and a half, and then I think 15. So I'm still just kind of bending this shape out, working out um, kind of my shape to make it a little easier for me to glue it down. I'm going to make sure that my little uh, nubs are kind of in a decent alignment. And I'm not going to lie to you, this should be fun to watch me do because I needed my husband's hands to help me out the first time around to hold this guy in place. Um, I've got some clamps, but here is what I want to warn you about with using the clamps and your foam core um, is it can leave indentions in your foam core. So just know that. So I am almost in perfect alignment. I'm going to slide this down so I can get this middle one glued in place and then try to work from there. Um, I'm going to try to maneuver this down since I'm about a half inch short on this. Uh, but, you know, sometimes I want to hide those mistakes from you guys. But at the same time, I think the ability to adapt when you're crafting really pays off too. So you can see my little cut nubs, a lot of them are going to be hidden. Those things are definitely not the easiest to cut down to me, these wire frames. So I am gluing all the way across that wire. If you can see that. This thing is really going to be held in place. I am just hoping that I can get these bottom fellas to kind of look like they fit. And I might have to cheat just a hair. And here's where you're going to see me cheat right here on this one. And I think it's going to be okay. And I can go ahead and glue this guy down now. This was the kind of the reason why I wanted to show you that adjusting these last two blades at the end would be um, a helpful benefit, especially if you're if you're struggling to get your wire stretched out really nicely. So I'm just going to angle my fan on these glue spots. And I'm just going to go ahead and finish gluing these um, all in place. Okay, so I have all of my pieces pretty heavily glued in place. And this is part of why I wanted to spray paint it last. Is it helps cover up all of those um, hot glue, goopy little spots. And it'll look more like welds. I'm going to go ahead and flip this over. Um... And show you what I did here, and you do not have to do this, but I'm going to go ahead and do it to this, and then go ahead and finish out um, the decorative portion of my pieces. I'm going to come in right under here, throw a little weld-looking spot there, 
once this is painted out that's kind of what that's going to look like and this is not even for security or putting this together this really is just because i kind of like that look And it is not something that you have to add. You can leave that really nice and clean. Um, the last thing I have to do is come back with my little googly eyes. And I'm going to put some of them in their place. And I think that I'm going to go somewhere close to the top of my, my blade up here and pop them in place like this you could do it along where your um, wire lines up i kind of prefer mine up to the top i know it doesn't end up making logistical sense but i do like the way it looks that way i'm going to grab my couple of thumbtacks here and tack in my last two blades And if you don't feel like your little tacks have gone in securely, you can always pop a little glue on the back side if you need to. Went down into the wood. They're in there really, really securely. Okay, so all I've got to do now is go in and adhere all my little happy googly eyes um, at the tops of my blades. All of my googly eyes are glued in place, and that brings me to the next thing that I want to remind you to do um, before I jump into it is I'm going to spray paint this entire piece. Before you do, go in and do kind of your, um, your inspection. Remove any glue strings because they will kind of glue down on you once you spray paint it. And I wanted to give you a quick warning on your spray paint. So, when you spray paint with this, there is a chemical reaction with the foam that's exposed on the edge. You can hit it with a very light mist, and it should be okay. Anything more than that, and you can, you can see on um, the peppermint cactus board that some other people have already encountered this, along with myself. If you overspray along this foam, there is going to be a chemical reaction, and it's going to shrink it up. Um, and then you just kind of have a hollow, two hollow little slices of paper. Um, so you don't want to do that. You want to do a real light hand on the side. The top, I'm just going to mist it. Um, and just get, you know, an overall kind of full application. And then I'm going to go in and rust my edges uh, with a faux paint finish. You don't have to do that. And if you're really curious about... Um, that I've got several videos up on things that I have rusted out including my large fan uh, That one's got a lot of details on how I did the painting, but let me hop to the outside and Go ahead and get this spray painted so you can see what that kind of final result looks like Okay, so my entire piece is now spray painted silver I tried my best to avoid my edges so that I did not melt my styrofoam um I did, I went ahead and did front and back of this. I'll let you see, kind of see. Um, I'm not going to go into the full paint technique. I did do a pretty good majority of it um, on the rust video um, with the bigger one. But I'm going to show you a little bit. Um, just a little bit that you can do really quickly. I'm not even going to go into the heavy rust colors that I usually do. Um, the first thing I wanted to show is because we tried to avoid spray painting the sides, you can see that I might have a little bit of the silver. And if you're gonna if you're gonna be rusting this and giving it a heavy rusted look, you can just do that with your rust kind of looking colors. If you're not gonna rust it heavy and you still have some white peeking through this is the color steel and I want to tell you that when it comes to metallic spray paint, especially silver uh, I know some of you guys have probably asked me what brand I use I almost don't pay attention because I usually in the silver metallic I will buy whatever is cheapest wherever and I have found that the quality is is um, Pretty similar all the way across the board 
um, as a base for doing these kind of finishes. Something about the metallic silver flakes, they all stick pretty equally well. So I don't have one in the silver that I truly recommend. For everything else, I use the 2X spray paint for all my other colors. However, in the silver, I really, I don't even care. So I'm just hitting some of these edges where I might have some light showing through. Um, you know, if that becomes a visual problem for you and you're not going to heavily rust it, just pop a little on those sides. Um, the other thing that I wanted to show is I had my wireframe spray painted black. Obviously, when I spray painted the entire piece, it did get some paint on it. This is Waverly um, chalk paint in the color ink, which is their name for black. I'm just going to come in really quick and kind of hit back some of the places. Some of it got a little of my silver on it. Some of it didn't. The cool thing about the Waverly ink is that it's going to give a really flat look to that. Almost a corroded metal kind of look to that. And same thing here. You could easily leave the these arms silver if you wanted to or go any color you wanted to. I'm just going to come in with some of this black. And I really could be doing this with a brush. But this is just about as easy. And this one, I'm not going to leave mine shiny. Mine will end up being rusted and um, aged and vintage looking. That really is all personal preference and what will work with your decor. Um, if the, the silver that you use has too much shine to you, um, you can do the galvanized look. And there's lots of tutorials online about um, kind of sponging on that galvanized look with the different layers of gray and white. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to take a cheater's root. Rather than make this galvanized looking, this is just going to look like aged metal for me. So with a little bit of that black, I can come in, rub it in. And I'm going to find a cleaner sponge. And I'm going to buff it back off. I'm using very little. You notice I did not reload this thing. The sponge still just has what it had. Like I said, mine will be very grungy looking. You can go all the way across this piece. You can leave it a little shiny in the middle. You can, I mean, you can just go whichever way you really want to go with this I had some spray paint that um, because of the angle that I had this hanging because I had it hanging when I spray painted it my paint started to run and it left a really cool texture in there um, from doing it that way. Rather than spraying it flat down, it wouldn't run that way. But um, it started to kind of slide down. And it has not a run like you would think of a drip. But the paint itself all kind of slid down. And it's got like a really cool texture that way. So something to consider if you can find somewhere to hang it up and paint it. You might can get that cool effect. So, rather than to go into all of those blades and do that, I'm going to do the same thing on the center portion. I'll hit all my bolts the same way, just to take that kind of over-the-top silver shine off of them. Um, you can do this whole center section this way. I still, you see, I have not, um, I've not dipped that in anything else. I've rubbed it on there a little grungy and rub a little bit off and just like kind of in real life where the grunge would settle down all dirty into your metal that's kind of what this is given that um, visual appearance of 
but it's gotten grungy over the years and the dirt and the grime has settled in those um, the texture of the metal and you can go as heavy or as light I want to be sure to get my little um, bolt there in my center and you can kind of see what that does if it gets too heavy on this plastic piece you can spritz it with a little water and rub that back off on your blades you don't want to do that this is a paper surface remember and keep in mind that it will respond um, accordingly as paper to water so on your plastic one you're fine with it though it's not going to hurt anything and you can see it ran on this one too that texture I don't know I want you to see kind of how cool that is there we go maybe maybe it'll show up there so I like that it did that um, I have a little hook that I was able to hang it off of And that's as far as I'm going to go really quick. If you want to see how some rust can be done, I have a more in-depth technique um, posted. But really quick, I'm just going to come in with some of this antique. I'm going to block this off a little bit. Where's my black first? I typically come in and I'll do... I'm going to do like a little... Kind of like when you're doing enamel that enamel wear look I'm just gonna kind of see what that does it kind of makes it look like that's worn and chipped and um, really beat up there on that side and as that dries and I'm gonna hope that I don't blend it because we want to layer it and not blend it I'm going to tap in or sponge in some of this antique as my darker brown because I had it handy. Um, you could use burnt umber, which I uh, love that color. You can get all the way down your blades. You can go really heavy. You don't have to do it at all if you don't want it. Rust it out. Um, don't forget, if you do those areas, think about where it would rust in nature. Um, you know, anywhere your areas meld or join together, you would likely have rust collecting in, um, nature. So, like, my little fake welded joints there that I put in with my hot glue, now they look like they've rusted a little this is orange spice um because it just happened to be the closest orange to me and i'm using the same sponge I'm just going to use kind of the opposite side there and this is a very bright orange and it can seem scary um, when you first tap it on but as it fades into the darker colors below it is not nearly as bright as you would think you could get away with the pumpkin color would be fine and it seems really scary and intimidating but it works out fine also you kind of see I don't know if I can get that close enough for you guys I am such a mess on the paint and there really is a lot more detail in my larger windmill um, video on the painting process I at least wanted to give you some ideas to run with in case you were only working on this one. Um, but that's pretty much it. And this thing is put together uh, really sturdy. I'll measure it really quick and let you know what the overall size at the measurements I gave you end up being. Um, remember, part of this comes from the 14 and a half or 14 and three quarter length of the foam core. The length of our dowels, our center medallion, and all of that together. Um, because of how I spaced mine out, 
all of that, we end up at um, 40 and a half inches on width. And I am around right, right under two feet in height. Um, so make your adjustments. If you need something larger or smaller, you can slide your blades up and down on your rods to get more um, width. You can cut your blades bigger to get more width. However, you kind of want to tweak that to personalize it to fit the space that you're needing to fit. This thing is super lightweight. Um, you can easily attach something to the back to hang it. Um, a sawtooth hanger here if you wanted to. Um, I made a mess of my glue right there, but had I not, I could hook it where this wire is. Um, somewhere down, down here. Like I said, mine has been resting as this half moon um, across a shelf and it has held up nicely it has not fallen over it's very lightweight I don't have to worry about too much weight on the shelf um, so whatever works for you in that regard and I'm gonna hang out here and finish painting this guy up and I hope you guys get a chance to craft for those that wanted this particular one there's lots um, there's so many videos out there. This was just kind of how I ran with doing the half, uh, the half size look of one of these. Um, it worked out for me. Definitely a lot cheaper. I maybe four or five dollars, just depending on what kind of embellishments that you add into it. And then you still have pieces left over from those purchases. That can be used on other crafts. So, I hope you liked it. Jump out and craft if you can. Um, if you can't, I will be crafting with you in spirit. Hope to talk to you guys soon. Bye.